Hey folks, and welcome to Truck King. Today we're looking at this, the 2024 Lincoln Navigator. Now, we are firmly in the world of luxury SUVs costing way over $100,000. So the question has to be asked of this one, is it worthy of the price tag? And is it really worth it over say, just a Ford Expedition? Well, that's what we're gonna look at right now. Under the hood of this Navigator, you're getting the high output version of the three and a half liter twin turbocharged V6. In this case, 440 horsepower, 510 pound feet of torque, and that is sent through a 10 speed automatic. And that is the only engine choice for this Navigator. So the Navigator you're looking at right here is the reserve trim, which here in Canada is the only trim that we get. So this thing starts at $120,000 Canadian, but this one you're looking at has about 10 grand worth of options on it, including some neat things like a emblem that fully lights up at night. And actually this thing puts on quite a show at night, which is pretty cool. Now coming around the side, we get a nice set of 22 inch wheels with those polished pockets. This wheel is actually an option as well. So that is an upgrade you're paying for, but they are uh, big, beautiful wheels. And these days on a big SUV like this, you have to have at least 20s, if not 22s to compete. And we do have a set of powered running boards. And then as usual, cause I'm here at the driver's side door, I'll tell you, this thing has 1,487 pounds of payload, which is a great number for an SUV of this size. Coming around the back, one of the unique features, not unique in the industry, but one of the features that you find in a lot of these full-size SUVs, glass that opens independently of the hatch. That is always nice to have to access your stuff. And then I'll also mention, of course, you can get a hitch on your Lincoln Navigator and you can tow up to 8,300 pounds. So let's look at the interior space now. I like to start with the baby seat situation. So we have four lower latch positions, one each here on the captain's chairs and then two on that rear bench. And we have five top tethers. So yes, across the rear bench, you get three, which in my opinion is the way it always should be. You should have maximum flexibility when it comes to where you can easily put your child seats. So let me claw them in now. So, this is listed at 41.1 inches of legroom, but as you can see, legroom's not a problem, especially because this seat does adjust, so I can move it further back. Headroom is a problem though, and we just tested the Ford Expedition recently, and it was the same thing in there. I stand at 6'2", over 300 pounds, and I do not have enough headroom. If I was sitting here, I would first of all move forward, probably tuck my head up into the indent for the sunroof. But yeah, headroom is a little disappointing, honestly, for such a large SUV. Now, one way I wanna praise Lincoln, they actually list legroom with the seat fully back. So they actually give you two legroom numbers. That's pretty rare. We usually just get one, and that's the same for the third row. They also list legroom with this seat fully forward. So we can put those numbers up for you, but I like that they do that. Now let me talk amenities because there's a ton here in the second row. This second row, frankly, is really about uh, being totally comfortable and not losing a lot from the first row. So first of all, we have this screen down here. And yes, we have a massaging second row, which is pretty cool. And that's something you don't see in a lot of vehicles, getting the massage for your passengers. Now I can also adjust my seat heat or my seat ventilation, my own climate. I can control the audio system from the back seat and you get a couple settings here. One thing I like is that comm screen. Nice just to set it there and forget it and have your own clock. But yes, that is pretty neat. And then of course, right back here, we have this monster console. So the second row passengers have tons of storage space, no problem. And then another button, which is pretty unique right here, this controls the sunshade up top. So if you're sitting in the back and you want to let the sunshine in, bam, you can do that. Or if you want to make it dark in here, you can do that as well. So I, again, I really like 
all of the controls and the amenities that are here for the second row passengers. And with that said, let's climb in the third row now and see how big it is. So there is a power button here on the wall, seat tumbles, pushes forward, and in we go. Let me adjust my headrest there. So this is listed, again, maximum with this seat fully forward. This is actually listed at 40 inches of rear seat legroom. And it's quite a bit in the third row. And then actually the roof back here kind of slopes up a little bit. So my headroom's slightly better. I, I rarely say this, but I almost feel more comfortable back here in the third. Now I do have just enough leg room, but again, that seat can adjust. So yeah, a really uh, nicely sized third, third row here. And I do have power recline in my third row. So I can lean back, sit up. That is pretty neat as well. Plus a USB port and my own uh, cup holders back here. So yeah, really spacious third row. And now let's go look at the storage. So of course we have a powered hatch here. And as you can see from our, you know, couple of pieces of gear here, not a ton of storage behind this third row. This is one of those vehicles where, yeah, if you're using this, you're not getting a ton of space, but luckily you can go ahead and fold these down. It is a 60 40 split, which is handy. So if you're not using that third row, you end up with just a load of space to pack in all of your stuff. And again, with something this expensive, I expect that to be powered. It is, it works well. And uh, yeah, for such a large SUV, this is so important having space for people and stuff because frankly, that's why you'd buy one of these vehicles in the first place. All right, just before we take off, let's look at the camera system here. So we throw it in reverse and there's your first view, sort of the wide rear and then the top down. This is always cool. Almost all Ford products do this with the top camera packages. You can zoom in on each individual corner as you move, which is neat. Now let's look at all the other views. There's your just your rear, and then those are your parking sensors. There's your wide rear, and there's a hitching view right there. So when you're hitching up a trailer, it makes it a little easier. So yeah, all the views that you could possibly need. Oh, there's a shortcut to the hitching view too. All the views that you could need and a nice uh, crisp looking camera there as well. Okay hey folks, now we're out on the road in this Navigator. So I've got it over into Excite mode. That's what they call sport mode here. Let's feel the power. Come around this corner and then foot to the floor. Ho ho ho! <laughs> There's 110 kilometers an hour in no time flat. Oh my goodness. Um, the power here feels incredible. There's some turbo lag. It takes kind of a, a good second to feel the real power hit, but when it does, oh my goodness, it is absolutely... A vehicle this big has no business being this quick. And, and again, we were just recently in the GMC Yukon Denali Ultimate and in the Ford Expedition King Ranch. If you haven't seen that video, go watch it on the channel. Uh, and I have to say, just sort of comparing this powertrain to both of those two, this one, no doubt about it, feels the most powerful. And, and there's also just something about the suspension here that makes this SUV feel like it handles pretty well. Now I'm in Excite mode. I'm gonna do a little bit of back and forth in the lane because in Excite, it feels fairly tight. It feels like the handling is responsive. And again, for something so big and heavy, uh, yeah, it feels like it really kind of wants to go into the corner. Now though, I'll take it out of Excite mode and we will just go back to normal mode. And I, I doubt this is really gonna come across on the camera, but I'll do it again. So now a little back and forth in the lane. And yeah, in normal mode, it feels much more roly-poly. It's got way more body roll to it, and, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. This is supposed to be sort of a big loafing SUV. And the fact that it has those active dampers just means that it can kind of deliver best of both worlds. When you're cruising on the highway in a straight line, keep it in normal and it just kind of floats along. And then when you do want to take corners a little quicker, or you just want to feel kind of that tighter handling, 
put it over into excite mode. And, and again, at these price points, I feel like adaptive suspension, it has to be included because it offers you that. It offers you best of both worlds. Most SUVs and trucks, frankly, are there with the adaptive suspension, but not all of them. And I just feel like everyone should be offering that feature for these luxury beasts. Now, talking about features, the first one I'll mention is the seat. I think Ford is just crushing the seat game lately. They have some of the most comfortable seats going, and this thing adjusts in all sorts of different ways, including like individual leg bolster adjustments or thigh bolster adjustments. Plus, it will give me a massage, so having the massaging seat is nice too. Yeah, just the overall comfort, and, and it's comfort because the seat just feels like it contours to whatever your body type is really really well so love the seats here in this lincoln and this is definitely a step up from that expedition that we had and even nicer than the yukon i'd say these seats are great now i have a huge head-up display i love that one feature i feel like that is missing is a rear camera mirror again in this segment you gotta offer that stuff with your top trim luxury suv and the lincoln does not have one of those so that is worth mentioning but it does have another feature that I want to dive into a little bit further, and that is the Blue Cruise system. Let me show you how it works. And here we are, folks. We are on Highway 400, which is a major highway here in the province of Ontario, and I am Blue Cruising. I am hands-free. I have the cruise control set at 110 kilometers per hour. And it was as easy as merge onto the highway, turn on the cruise control. When Blue Cruise was available, the screen came up right away and said hands-free Blue Cruise. And that's it, it just takes over. Now, one of the things I was curious about, and I, I know it's supposed to work, but this is just proving the point, you can wear sunglasses and it is actually still monitoring my eyes. Even though I have the sunglasses, it's able to see me and make sure that I am paying attention. So if I was to start to look around for too long, it's gonna get mad at me and tell me to keep my eyes on the road. Oh, I just gotta keep hands on steering wheel right there. It kicked off. Now I'm coming into a construction area and I wonder if maybe it's the construction I'm also coming to the end of this highway. It becomes Highway 11 up here, so I wonder if that's part of it. Oh no, it's coming back now. But it does clearly instruct you when you have to have your hands on the wheel. There's actually a little image of a steering wheel with hands on it, so it's making sure it's very clear. And it just went back to Blue Cruise, so I, I'm, I'm betting maybe it was the construction lines back there. The paint color even changed to orange, so I think it got a little upset at that. Which, yeah, that was smooth enough, and that is what you wanted to do if it's unsure of something to uh, allow you to take control. But so far, it's working good. I'm going to keep cruising for a little bit, and uh, we'll see what happens. If I have anything to report, I'll let you know. And we continue our drive, still hands-free. So far, so good. Um, I think the other part of this discussion, the first part is just sort of how the system actually works. And, yeah, so far, it's working. The, the second part is just... Are you going to use this technology? How important is it? Um, I don't know. I guess if I owned this vehicle on a long road trip, I definitely appreciate having these systems. But there is one sort of caveat, which is that it is it is, has to change your mindset. You're going from a driver to essentially someone who is now monitoring the system. So you still have to be alert. And of course, it's watching me to make sure I'm physically looking, but it's not just about looking. You have to actually still be paying attention. And that's where I think there is a little bit of a safety concern where these systems can kind of lull you into a false sense of security. And I'm coming back into a construction zone here, so we'll see what it does with the uh, the lines, which are a little bit different. But yeah, my worry is you get lulled into a false sense of security. You start trusting the machine and it only has to make a mistake one time. And we are still at the point with autonomous drive systems. Oh, I got keep hands on steering wheel again. So I wonder again in the construction zone here, it's not happy. But that's okay, I'm totally okay with that. If it sees something that it doesn't think it can predict, well then it should tell me to take over. But back to my point, I'm worried people get lulled into a false sense of security and then you just trust it. And we're still at a point where the liability is 100% on the driver. Even though it's doing this hands-free, it's still totally on me. So I don't want 
people to think of these systems as, oh, I can sit there and, and daydream and read a book and watch a movie. You just have to switch, change your mindset, and now I'm back to hands-free. You have to change your mindset from, oh, I'm driving that vehicle, I'm you know physically in control of it, to I am a monitor now, but I have to be an alert monitor. I cannot just stop monitoring the system because the second you stop monitoring is when things go bad. Somebody was just getting off in front of me there, so slowed right down, but yeah, did a nice job. Speeds back up pretty smooth, so with the flow of traffic, it's not horrible. Yeah, pretty decent experience out here with Blue Cruise. And, uh, and I will say, even with my monitoring and safety point, overall on a long drive, this should be a little bit less stressful. It does take some of the thinking out of your hands, and, uh, and that's sort of the idea behind it. So I don't dislike it. I just think we need to sort of approach these things with caution. Don't just assume that they're incredible and they can do everything for you. At least not yet. The interior styling here is gorgeous in my opinion. I really like the speaker covers and all the detail that they put into those. Plus we have real wood even down here in the center which has a really nice tactile kind of feel to it so I appreciate that as well and yeah you know compared to the Expedition King Ranch that we had this does feel like a step up just in the overall kind of luxury feel of all of the materials inside of here and then if I had to compare it to the GMC Yukon Denali Ultimate they're absolutely on par except for a couple of those features like I mentioned the camera mirror I don't think one or the other really has an edge up in luxury it comes down to what do you prefer because some of the materials and the look is different but yeah overall impression is you know this Lincoln SUV interior is absolutely beautiful I won't say it's worth the money because the amount of money we're paying these days for these things is crazy but if you spend 130 grand here I don't think you'll be disappointed by any of the uh, interior appointments well, folks, we are coming to the end of this one. Now, I have to compare it to those other two luxury SUVs I just drove. So compared to the Ford Expedition King Ranch, this Navigator feels like a legitimately more luxurious vehicle. I was worried I was going to get in and it was going to feel just like the Ford, but it really doesn't. Even in the way it drives, it feels nicer than the Expedition did. And then compared to that Denali Ultimate, it's absolutely right there on par. I actually think I prefer the way this one drove although I still do like the 6.2 liter V8 in the GM. So if I was comparing those two, it would be a hard choice. And that is just sort of the overall way of saying that this Lincoln Navigator is one of the nicest full-size luxury SUVs on the market right now. And yeah, if you're looking at this segment, do not forget to take a look at this one. So folks, that is it for this video. But now, of course, I need to hear from you. Go into the comments. Let me know what you think of the Lincoln Navigator. As always, while you're down there, don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, hit join to become a member, and then come right back here to the channel to see what we're testing next. See ya.